What is up guys and welcome back to another episode of the Leeds United career mode. We're into episode number 107 and when you're watching this, this is Friday. So welcome to the weekend. Hopefully we can kickstart your weekend off in a good manner with this episode coming up here of today's career mode episode. So hopefully you're going to enjoy this anyways. I've got, I think, three games plus a few simmed ones in there as well to take into account. If you remember yesterday's episode, I spoke about the teams that we were able to join and stuff to do like that. And I said, if you get knocked out of the Champions League, we'll be moving clubs before the end of the season. If we don't, I'll be moving clubs at the end of the season. And I, I understand, guys, simming games is not very entertaining to watch. But the fact is, we've been here now for five years at Leeds. I'm getting to the point where I'm thinking to myself, this is getting to the point where I can't really be bothered playing with Leeds anymore because it's just too damn easy. The team's too good. So... That's why I wanted to move. So at the end of the season, if it's not possible for me to move, I will be starting another career mode away from this one. And I said to you guys, we'll probably keep a save file here and we'll come back to it before the end of FIFA 17, uh, FIFA 17 just to see um, what we can do in one possible final season. But I will keep the save file there no matter what happens regardless. And of course, that might be a possibility to come. But just before we get into the episode today, as we have another sim game here up against Atletico Madrid, I mentioned as well I don't want to sim away games, but the thing is we already threw in, in, in the group stage and at the end of the day it doesn't matter regardless of this result here as to whether or not what, what happens, we're still top of the group. But the thing I just wanted to point out quickly guys is the channel's grown so much in the last few weeks and that's completely down to you guys. And I know I stress this a lot and I know I say to you guys thank you for all the support, but seriously man, you guys are incredible. We've had a lot of these... Videos go way past the like targets I've set. The amount of views we're getting now on each video is crazy. The amount of good, nice comments that you guys leave as well is unbelievable. But I understand as well that from a person's perspective, watching career modes over and over again gets quite repetitive and it becomes quite boring to watch them all the time. And so that's why I want to sort of branch out and try other stuff. And I do have a few series ideas as I mentioned. And if it ever gets to the point where I'm sort of thinking to myself, you know, this is going well, I'm nicely growing and I think I can put more time into it and sort of grow it then hopefully that will come in the future and I can do a lot more series based on or a lot more video ideas based on what I already do because we have three sort of career modes on the go right now. The My Player one, the Road to Glory one, and then this one. And then whenever I can get around to making them, I also upload an Ultimate Team Road to Glory. So that's coming out. I think that came out yesterday, one of the episodes actually, or the day before that maybe. But it's really hard to sort of get into more stuff when you're playing career mode. I understand as well, guys, that career mode can be very repetitive, but I'm assuming that most of the 3,000 people that are subscribed to the channel are already here because they enjoy career mode, and that's why they're subbed, and everything else will just be a bonus. But, you know, I do sort of want to branch out and do other stuff alongside career mode, so don't uh, ever think that this is just going to be it on the channel, because if I ever get more time, as I said, there will be other stuff and different content out on the channel. And... I will like to stress the point here of the fact that I didn't do anything for the 2k subscribers or the 1k was it? I think actually I said I was going to do a 1k video. I didn't do one because we hit 1k so fast and as soon as we got to 1k we hit then 1.5k and then I thought okay I'll do one at 2.5k and then we hit that so fast that I literally didn't have anything prepared. So I'm going to wait until 5k because although that's quite a way away it gives me time to think of an idea and sort of prepare it. I have got a couple of ideas in there sort of in my head behind it, and then I've got the 10k one to come up if we ever get to that stage. I don't know if we're ever going to hit 10k on the channel, we'll just have to wait and see. If we ever do, though, I have a big video plan for that 10k, and uh, it'll be interesting because it's a very weird one, is 10k when you hit 10k subs, but I'm talking as if we're already nearly there. We're nowhere near that, but 5k, I mean, 3k is crazy enough, so if we ever get to 5k, that's probably when I'm going to do sort of a special video, maybe something along the lines of... of um, Actually, I won't spot it yet. We'll just have to wait and see. But you can see we're taking on Leicester here for the first game of this episode on this fantastic Friday. And we managed to take the lead very early on in this one. Seven minutes in. Anthony Martial does what he does best and puts the ball in the back of the net. He's done it so many times for us during this series. He really has been one of the star men in this series. And when it comes around to the back end of it, if we don't in fact move clubs, I will be doing a sort of series roundup and uh, not an awards type thing. Just we'll be looking back at the goals of the series. We'll be looking back as well at certain stuff that actually happened, and we'll be looking back at other stuff in which already went on. But, I mean, to be honest with you right now, if I had to pick one guy who's been absolutely instrumental for us and probably has been the player of the series, it's got to be between Anthony Martial and between El Ghazi. Those two guys have been incredible. Of course, El Ghazi came in at a stage when we didn't really have the best of teams here at Leeds. I mean, he came in and he was decent, and he actually did exceptionally well. But at the time of when we got him, our team was just becoming an absolute force in world football. But now it's at that stage with the likes of Martial and a couple of other guys that have joined the club. Of course, Neymar in there as well. That we can be considered as the best team in the world. You know, back-to-back -back Champions League does not go unnoticed. Three Premier League titles in a row does not go unnoticed. But apparently it does to the board. Because, of course, our manager rating is extremely low. Because they would rather have youth players... Then five titles back to back. I mean, I ain't going to stress on that because I've already stressed on it enough. But that's just my opinion. Why on earth you'd want that? 
No idea, but you can see Anthony Martial in this one is off to an absolute fire. Grabs himself two goals already and should have had his hat-trick there, but a fantastic save from the keeper between the sticks. Denies us the chance of giving the Frenchman his hat-trick, but Leicester, how about that for a tackle? I don't know who it was. I have no idea who the man who made the tackle was. I thought it was uh, Will Jackson there, but it might not have been Will Jackson. But you can see what a tackle it was. It set us up perfectly, and Roberto Firmino finishes that one off into the bottom corner brilliantly. Leicester City nil, Leeds United 3. And I would like to stress as well, guys, going into this one against Leicester, they were sat bottom of the Premier League table. So the chances are they're going to be playing championship football next season, which is crazy because if you look at their team and look at the players they've still got at the King Power Stadium, the chance it's weird because... To see the team they've got and to see them struggling as much as they are, although they are struggling in real life after winning the Premier League title, which we all know about, of course. If you watch real world football, you will know that they're not doing too well for themselves. But you can see by the match facts, they didn't have a shot. They had no shots on my goal. I dominated the play for the full 90 minutes. And the fact that they've got a team like that and struggling and they're in 20th position, I have no idea how. So if we eventually do ever move clubs in this series and Leicester go down to the championship, there could be a few little cheeky buys available to us from the championship in terms of value-wise and, of course, in terms of getting them over because they want to play better football in the championship. A few of those guys in the King Power Stadium uh, are at the King Power Stadium at Leicester. So, I mean, it'll be interesting to see who becomes available depending on who does, in fact, go down. So I make sure, or I have to make sure that I keep track of the Premier League if we do, in fact, move out of it before the end of the season. So you can see Matt and Harris still both in the training system, but like I said, it's probably not going to be done where we manage to get the uh, the whole youth academy bit done. We have to get eight players, grow them over 10 overall, and then play them in 20 matches. No way is that going to happen before the end of this season. It's just not going to happen. So unfortunately, that looks as if it's going to bring the manager rating down, and that's why I'm not sure as to whether or not we'll be able to move clubs in time, or if I can do it before the manager rating does in fact come down. But you can see we are taken on Southampton for the second game of the episode today. Of course, we've had two more before that, simmed. But I mean the second gameplay game of the episode. And this one, they are also sat down in 17th position. So again, another team struggling in the Premier League, which you wouldn't expect to be in a lower position as that, unless they've lost a few of their good players. And unless they've lost most of their starting 11 that they would have had when this series started. We are six seasons in, remember, guys. So a lot of the teams will have changed around a whole bunch. But to be sat in 17th position... Southampton, a team that I would expect them to be in at least top 10, and they have a team for it. I don't know what the team is looking like right now, but in all honesty, I was surprised when I played this episode. To see Leicester and Southampton struggling like they are, it was sad, man, because I felt as though they should have been doing a little bit better for themselves. But 13 minutes into this one, again, off to an absolute flyer, and you guessed it, Ricardo Rodriguez goes down on the left-hand side, and the other man that wasn't Martial, the other one who's been a hero for us, Anwar nods one home to make it 1-0. So in consecutive games, the first goal in both of these early on in it has been headers by Anwar and Anthony. And it's been interesting because none of those guys, I would have said, if we'd have put a ball in the area, that they would get their head on it. But in all honesty, both of them in the air have been pretty decent in this series. And I can't complain. I would have thought that they'd be better with their ball at their feet, which they currently are, of course. You know, both of them are extremely good with the ball at their feet. But they have got the ability to nod a goal in with their head every so often. And that's what I like to see. Because even though I wouldn't associate them with headed goals, they do sometimes pop up with them. And that's an, another one there from Anwar. So he gets us off to a good start. 14 minutes in, we take the lead in this one, which was... To be expected, you know, like I said, sat 17th place, we should be winning this comfortably. But 29 minutes in, Cedric gives the Cedric gets the ball here, gives it into Yodi Classy, who gets dispossessed by Anwar El Ghazi. El Ghazi waits for the run of Ericsson to come in. He eventually does make that run and on his five-star weak foot with his left foot, just taps it past the goalkeeper. But these are the goals that I don't like, guys, because a lot of the time in FIFA, it goes through the player's legs and it's so frustrating when it happens because it doesn't look as if the goal should have actually happened. Now, I don't know if this did go through the legs of Ericsson. He might have moved his leg out in the way time because when the zoomed uh, angle came in, I wasn't able to tell. But he may have got his left foot around the ball in time but if it went through it it was so frustrating because I don't like those goals but you can see Southampton then came down the left hand side gave the ball away cheaply yet again Owen Allen who's playing the games for us today as he gives it off to Martial keeps the ball in play Martial into Ericsson and this was just an absolute quality goal Ericsson back inside to El Ghazi El Ghazi into Martial and that is quality you know I held up the play just enough gave him enough time for Anthony Martial to run through and that is now three different scorers in this first half so the first 45 was absolutely golden for us in this one El Ghazi with the goal and assist El Ghazi um, Martial also on the score sheet. I couldn't have asked for a better way to get started in this first half. And it went into the second pretty much the same, in all honesty. 51 minutes in. Another chance goes our way. Semedo into Allen. Allen looks to give the ball inside. Eventually does give it inside to Ericsson. And this was an incredible strike from the Danish playmaker. But unfortunately, it comes back off of the post. And it would have been a very good way to cap off an extremely good performance as well. But in the 90th minute, 
The referee blew the full-time whistle, 3-0 victory. It was to be expected, as I said. 17th position against top of the table. It's to be expected. I mean, we can't really say anything other than that. I mean, you've got to look at it as well. We would have been unbeaten had we have not lost that game to West Ham. And the way we lost it to West Ham, I was frustrated. So, the way we lost that game, I'm looking at that as one of those games that you just put down to sheer unluckiness in terms of that one. Although we were pretty much outplayed, I'd say, because, you know, West Ham had a lot of the play and I didn't really create too much going forward, but... In my opinion, uh, West Ham didn't really do too much themselves to win the game. I know I said that they dominated the play, but it's one of them tricky ones where West Ham probably did deserve to win, but I didn't feel as though we deserved to lose, if you get what I'm saying. So the fact that we did lose it and we're already unbeaten, I can't go for the unbeaten season, so that already takes it away from me here. So that is one of the things that I was aiming to do, and that's probably why we why it might be wise to move in the middle of the season because we still can't have that unbeaten spree going. So... If a job comes up middle of the season, I will take it, regardless of what we're doing in the Champions League. But if there's a job there at the end, and it's the likes of Bayern Munich, Juventus, or somebody big like that, then I'll wait and see what you guys say in terms of that one. But right now, the only available clubs that I've got to go to are four Premier League clubs, and it changes every so often. And there's Juventus in there, PSG are in there, Bayern Munich are in there, and like I said, the occasional Real Madrid and Barcelona are in there. So if they're still there by the end of the season, and my manager rating is high enough to go, I will give you guys a vote as to whether or not you want to see me go to one of those teams, or if we should start a new one. If a team comes up, though, in which it's like a Wolfsburg or an Inter Milan or something like that, where the teams may not be as um, exceptional as the other guys, and they may need a bit of work doing to them, then I will move in this series as well, because that's something I still want to do. But we took on Palace here for the third and final game of the episode. You can see the team on your screen. Jackson is in that starting eleven. As he mentioned, or as I mentioned, we brought him back, obviously, from loan from, uh, I think it was Bill Bow he was on loan at. One of you guys gave me a comment, and that's why I brought him back. And that's just, you know, one of them things that you guys do for me. You guys leave me some exceptionally good comments. And in the end, it works out perfectly. And it didn't start well here for Crystal Palace as they got a man sent off early on here. Zeki Friars with the challenge gets nowhere near the ball, takes the man out. You can see Anthony Marshall not happy with the challenge, having a go at Zeki Friars there. It wasn't even Anthony that he actually tackled as the referee waves. Anthony to go away. It was actually Christian Eriksen he brought down. So why Anthony Martial was complaining, I'm not quite sure. But you can see from the free kick, I tried to be a bit cheeky from this one and go to the goalkeeper's near post. And he read it like a book and managed to get down and make the save. Two deniers, the opening goal in this one. But from that stage, we absolutely pummeled Crystal Palace and really could have had double figures in this one. I don't show you every single chance because it would have taken the video to a very long uh, stage in terms of length. So we had a chance early on here. Neymar getting on the end of a pass and firing it into the bottom corner to make it Palace nil. Leeds United won in this one. And that was only a few minutes after Zeki Friars was in fact sent off. So you can see already off to a good start. And as I mentioned, we had so many chances in this first half and it was a... It was a half in which a lot of the chances were getting blocked, they were saved, they weren't really clinical finishing by me, or it was just sort of me not being able to get the ball in the back of the net in a way that I would have hoped. But, I mean, to get the lead early on here and settle the nerves, it can be quite difficult playing against 10 men, but on this occasion we managed to open them up just enough to create the opening goal. And El Ghazi again with yet another assist in this episode. He got one for Martial in the last game and he gets one here for Neymar as he fires that one into the back of the net. No idea actually what Zoe was doing between the sticks there for Palace. Why he came out, I don't know, because it was a simple finish in the end for Neymar to make. And when you've got 95 rated Neymar in that situation, he's obviously not going to miss that. And then this is just unreal. You can see Anthony Martial spins and gives it off to Green. Green into Neymar and that is a great turn. And then the finish is exquisite. And this is why... He was 125 million. I'll show you the sliders as well because I don't want people... Now the channel is growing a bit more as well. A lot of people are starting to leave comments saying stuff about can I show sliders and stuff and, and stuff like that. So I show every slide. Oh, well, I'll occasionally show them in game just to prove that I'm not in fact not using them. I don't know how many times I can prove that point, but people still like to comment it anyway. But you can see no sliders involved and it's just a world-class finish in all honesty from Neymar. And he's got crazy stats. And the fact that he's 95 overall, I have never ever used a 95 rated player in FIFA before in a career mode. I've never got to the stage where I've had a 95 rated player in career mode. Yes, I've had a couple of Youth Academy prospects go to like 90, high 90, um, but I've never had one go to 95 and been able to play with them. Joel Green right now actually is 94 as well. So he's approaching that stage, but he's yet to become a 95 overall. So Neymar is the highest player I have ever used in career mode. And that's a mental fact to state. And we actually paid 125 million pounds for his services but Palace actually to their credit had a couple of chances in the game and the one here 
goes inside to the uh, to Paredes. He takes the strike on and really between the sticks makes a decent save to keep the score 2-0. If they'd have got that gate, oh, got the goal there, I'd have been a bit nervous, but thankfully they didn't. We had one more chance in the 90th minute as we broke away, gave it to Joel Green, and Tompkins tries to get there ahead of the Legion United man. Instead of getting the ball, though, takes Joel Green down, and it is a penalty kick. And of course, because Neymar is on a hat trick during this game here. And decided we were going to take it with the Brazilian and give him a chance at being able to grab himself the match ball to take home with him. You can see, definite penalty. No doubt about it in my mind or the referee's mind. He points to the spot. I should have probably given it to Anthony Marshall as he is chasing the golden boot this season for the third consecutive season running. But in the end, I took it with Neymar and a fantastic penalty to the bottom left-hand side of the goal. Makes it three, grabs himself the hat-trick and he will be taking home the match ball from this one as well. So Zeki Fryer's red card really did swing the momentum in my favour. Like, I had a couple of chances before that happened, but they didn't come to anything. And when he got sent off, I absolutely pommeled the Palace goal and it could have had as I say, being double figures in this one. I think I'll show you the match facts by the end of this one. And we have an absolute astronomical amount of shots during the game. But that's pretty much going to bring the episode to a close, guys. I am going to sort of end this a little bit earlier. I just wanted to say, as I say numerous times in the series, thank you all so much for your continued support on the channel. You guys are mental and incredible. For everything you guys do, leaving comments, leaving likes, and leaving everything else, you guys are absolutely immense. But I will see you all with another video very soon. Adios!